In this video we're going to talk about the natural domain. We're also going to complete an example where we have four questions. Questions A, B, C and D. In order to understand what the natural domain is all about, we first need to understand what the restricted domain is all about. Now this is something we spoke about in the previous video. We would take something such as this parabola, which usually goes on forever. It would normally have arrows coming out like so. But this parabola has had its domain restricted. We've taken off these arrows. The domain of this parabola has been restricted to x values between negative 4 and positive 4. We can see that this graph does not exist to the left of the negative 4 and doesn't exist to the right of the positive 4. This graph has been restricted to a domain such that we only accept x values between 4 and negative 4. Now I constructed this graph on Desmos, so I'll show you the command I entered. Here is the equation and next to that we can see the domain that I set. If I was to get rid of this domain, you would notice that the graph would then go on forever. But I want it to be restricted. Now when you look at the circle to the right, it also has a domain. For the domain we would state that x is between 3 and negative 3. When we look at our graph, we can see that it only exists between x values of negative 3 and 3. Now when I show you how this was constructed in Desmos, you will notice that I did not put in a domain. And the reason for that is that the domain occurs naturally. I didn't have to manually type it in. So sometimes we have a restricted domain where the user enters a domain and restricts the graph. And sometimes we have a natural domain, a domain that just occurs naturally. You may also notice that both of these graphs have a range. But we never talk about a restricted range or a natural range. Why is that? Now you don't really need to know the answer to that question, so I don't feel I should answer this question in much detail. But I think all I'm going to say is that the range is dependent on what the domain will be. So in general, we really just talk about the domain because when we put restrictions on the domain, we end up getting restrictions on the range as a result of that. Anyway, let's get into the example now. In example two, we are asked to find the natural domain and the range for each graph below. Looking at question A, you may notice that we haven't imposed any restrictions on the domain. We can tell because there are arrows at each end of the parabola, hence why we are finding the natural domain. It's the domain that occurs naturally. At the moment, I can see that the graph exists for x values of 0, 1, 2, even negative 1 and negative 2. Does the graph exist for positive 3 and even points beyond that? It's hard to know the answer to this question because we're only looking at a section of the graph. Let's bring the same graph up on Desmos. Now the good thing about Desmos is we can move it around. So here where we see the positive 3, I can move the graph down. We can see that the graph does exist when x is positive 3. What about much larger numbers such as 10 or even 100? Well, we would essentially have to move the graph and zoom out for ages to figure that out. So looking at 10, it's looking like the graph does exist here. Yes, it does. And I don't really want to go all the way out to 100. It will just take me too long. I think we can see that the graph will exist for all values of x going towards the right and also all values of x going towards the left where we have our negatives. So what do we write down when the domain includes all the values on the x-axis? Well, we simply state that the domain is all real x. Now some of you may be wondering why have we used the word real here? 
Well, in the previous chapter, we spoke about real numbers, and the real numbers are all the numbers that are on the x-axis. We also need to write down what the range is for this graph. For the range, we're looking at the vertical axis, or in this case, the y-axis, and we're wondering for which numbers does the graph exist. You might notice that the graph seems to stop here where y equals negative 2. It doesn't go below this point, but it goes forever above that point. So for our range, we'll state that the graph exists for all y values greater than or equal to negative 2. It's important that we use the greater than or equal to sign because the graph doesn't only exist for values greater than negative 2, it also exists when y equals negative 2. Looking at question B, once again we're finding the natural domain, the domain that occurs naturally. Now you might notice that the graph exists for x values between negative 5 and 1. So we'll write down that the domain is the set of x values between 1 and also negative 5. Once again, it's important we use the less than or equal to sign because the graph doesn't just exist between x values of negative 5 through to 1. It also exists when x equals 1 and it also exists when x equals negative 5. Looking at the range now, you may notice that the graph exists for y values as high as 1 and as low as negative 5. So our range is going to look exactly the same as the domain, except we put a y in the middle. Once again, we need to use those less than or equal to signs. Let's now move on to questions C and D. We have our graph and we also have a dotted line which is known as the asymptote. I'll write that down for you. It actually has one S, A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. Now the asymptote is basically an imaginary line that the graph comes very, very close to, but never touches or crosses. You can see down here that the graph is approaching a dotted line but as I mentioned, it will never ever touch that dotted line, it will never ever cross that dotted line. So looking at our domain, we can see our x value of 1 here, and the graph seems to exist for x values greater than 1, and it goes on forever. So for our domain, we're going to write that we have x values greater than 1. Now you may notice I didn't use the greater than or equal to sign, just the greater than sign. Why did I do that? Well we can see that the graph does exist for x values greater than 1, but it doesn't exist when x equals 1. When x equals 1 we have the asymptote. You may remember that this graph comes close to the asymptote but it never touches it and never crosses it. All right, now let's look at the range. For the range, we look at our vertical axis, or our y-axis. We can see that the graph continues down forever, so it's going to exist for all y values in the negative direction. Is it also going to exist for y values in the positive direction? We can see it's kind of varying off here to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Desmos here. We can see that the graph exists for y values of 1, y values of 2, if we look at the 3, it also exists for y values of 3. I can keep zooming out and checking other y values, and as I progress, I will find more and more y values in the positive direction. So I think it's safe to assume that the graph exists for all y values in the positive direction as well as the negative direction. So what are we going to write for range? We're going to write all real y which basically means all the y values. All right, let's now look at question D. You'll notice we have two curves, and even though we have two curves, this is all the one graph. So we'll start by finding the domain. So looking at our horizontal axis, or our x-axis, for what x values does our graph exist? Well, you might notice that we've got an asymptote when x equals negative 1. 
And whenever we see these asymptotes, we know that the graph approaches this point but never actually reaches it. So looking at our curve on the left, it's approaching our asymptote but never touching or going past that point. Also for the curve on the right, it approaches the asymptote but never touches or passes it. So we can see that our graph goes on forever as x extends in the positive direction, and the graph also goes on forever as x extends in the negative direction. We can see that this graph exists for all x values except when x equals negative 1. We can see that both curves approach this point but never actually touch it. So what are we going to write for our domain? I want to somehow state that it's all the values of x except negative 1. And the best way to do that is to split the domain into two parts. It's all the values of x less than negative 1 and all the values of x greater than negative 1. So all I need to write down is that we have x values less than negative 1 and we also have the x values greater than negative 1. Now I haven't used the equal sign here, which means that x cannot equal negative 1, and that's what we want. Alright, now we need to find the range. And when I'm talking about the range, I'm looking at my vertical axis, or my y axis. We can see that the graph goes on forever for y values in the positive direction, and also goes on forever for y values in the negative direction. So this graph actually exists for all y values, except 1, and that's because of our asymptote here, where y equals 1. You can see that both graphs approach this asymptote. They get really close to it, but they never touch it. So all we need to do is state that the graph exists for y values less than 1, and also for y values greater than 1. So our range will be y values less than 1 and y values greater than 1. Once again, we didn't put that equal sign down because the graph does not exist when y equals 1. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.